Hi, we're the Mind Body Couple. I'm Tanner Murtaugh. And I'm Anne Hampson. And this podcast is dedicated to helping you unlearn neuroplastic pain and mind body concerns. everyone welcome back to the podcast welcome back today and is sick yes <laughs> <laughs> um i am sick tanner i don't know for those of you listening if any of you guys have kids you will understand the dreaded sickness that i think every parent mm-hmm. hates when one person in the family gets sick you know that that's like spreading to everybody Almost one by one sometimes, very slowly. It started with Tanner, by the way. And I was really sick. (laughs) He says that, kind of giving me this look. Because actually, there's this weird phenomenon where when we we all get sick in our home, but Tanner, he doesn't actually really get that sick. He complains like he is. Oh, oh, (laughs) yes. Um, But no, he does not suffer like the rest of us. Well, you know why? I have a theory. What? It's because my nervous system is so regulated. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right. <laughs> just so regulated uh-huh. that the sickness just... Right, right. ...is so mild I for guess me. that's goals for all of us, Tanner. I know. Life goals. <laughs> Life goals. Be like me, Ed. Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess so. But, yeah, so I apologize if I sound a bit sniffly, but this kind of thinking about this sickness um, has led me to the topic of radical acceptance because that's something that I try. I'm not always great at applying when I'm sick because often things get thrown. I can't do things that I want. Like my plans go by the wayside. And I think whether you have kids or not, everyone relates to that. Yeah. Um, and sickness can be a stressful time. Now, before people stop listening to this podcast... I know that radical acceptance, especially when we have chronic pain and symptoms, yes. is one of the most hated topics <laughs> around. Yes, and so we are going to talk about why we think it's important to mention this in this podcast, mm-hmm. but also maybe how it ties into my illness too. Yes, and acceptance, I think there's a lot of benefit yes. in it, but people misinterpret what we mean by that. Well, why do people go get so frustrated by it? Well, I think when we have chronic pain and symptoms, and if people go see a therapist that's not a mind-body therapist, mm-hmm. what happens is it's explained in this way of you must accept that your symptoms will be here forever. Mm, yes. Or people interpret it like that. But I think... That's like in the classic pain or symptom management therapy that's out there. Right. Which I'm not saying there isn't cases of chronic pain and symptoms where that's needed. Yes, yes. But the vast majority of chronic pain and symptoms are neuroplastic, Mm -hmm. or at least a portion of that symptom is neuroplastic. Yeah. And so I really want to break down what we mean by radical acceptance. Yes. Well, one thing I think is interesting with my sickness is I have that radical acceptance, but I know it's going to get better. I know it's only going to last a few days. So there's that radical acceptance of like, okay, I'm not going to fight it, but I have hope and belief that um, this will pass. Yeah. And it's a little bit easier, of course, course. with like a sickness. Right. It's harder when it comes to things like chronic pain. Yes. Chronic symptoms, anxiety, yes, dysregulation, emotions, things that can come back at people consistently. Mm, that can flare up. And that's right. So we're talking about chronic pain, chronic mental health that can last and be ongoing. Yes. I like how our producer, Alex, I heard him talk about acceptance once. Yes. As it's a useful posture. Mm-hmm. And I think that's... It's very well said because when it comes to neuroplastic pain and symptoms, the body's not damaged. Yes. And I don't want to tell people ever that they're going to be accepting their symptoms for the rest of their life. No. But I think that's where people take it when they hear the word acceptance is they're giving up. It's hopeless. It's helpless. 
Yes. And so it's back to that idea of radical acceptance of this situation by understanding that there is hope that it will get better. That same kind of idea. And it's the difference between short-term acceptance Mm -hmm. and long-term acceptance. Uh. For example, if you're having a symptom flare, it's probably good to have short-term acceptance. Yes. But we don't need to have long-term acceptance that those symptoms are always going to be there. Mm -hmm. And we want to be cautious of that. And I want to talk a little bit about also about what acceptance isn't. Because people think that acceptance is somehow approval. And acceptance and approval are not the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're not. We don't have to. We all have to accept things in our lives that we don't actually approve of. Yes. It's like if you're having a pain or symptom flare, we don't approve of that. No. But short-term acceptance is really beneficial when it comes to that. Well, and when we know that pressure can keep pain going, can keep symptoms going, when we know that kind of fixation can keep it going, yeah. that sh- that like that, that short-term acceptance can really take that down. Yeah, and what short-term acceptance will do is it prevents us from going into like that dorsal hopeless, helpless feel. Right. But it also prevents us from going into this fight or flight response. Totally. And that's what's really key about it. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise what people do is they just keep engaging in this preoccupation, fearful, frustrated stance yes. with the pain or symptom. And that actually worsens it. So it's that acceptance for now Mm -hmm. to get to that long-term kind of plan or goal. Exactly. And I believe that short-term acceptance can truly reduce the pain or symptoms if it's done properly. Yes. So I'll give you an example with myself. Yeah. And this wasn't with pain or symptoms, but this was with chronic anxiety. So (laughs) pretty similar. Um, Well, and I think a lot of people listening probably could relate to having chronic anxiety or fear or that kind of relationship with their symptoms. Yes. And so at this point, this was many years ago, but at this point I was out of chronic pain and symptoms, but I had this bad three, four month period where my anxiety just was off the charts. Yeah. Looking back, I just wasn't taking care of myself well enough. <laughs> right. So that, yeah. well, and something to highlight here is sometimes we can transfer fixation of symptoms to something else. And yeah. I think that's what happened for you, Tanner. A hundred percent. And so what took place is I was just always frustrated or fearful of the sensations of anxiety. Mm-hmm. But then we had this one day where you and I were going to one of the Christmas markets, huh. our favorite one. Yes. Um, we like Christmas. We like Christmas we markets. We wish it was Christmas now. This makes yeah. me feel so nice to reminisce about Christmas. Know, Anyways, just, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you took that. Right? <laughs> but I remember at the beginning of the day, I don't know what clicked, but something clicked in my mind where I was like, you know what, today, like, I don't care if you're here anxiety. I'm not going to fight you. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to try to make you go away. In fact, I'm just going to live my day out as best as I can, knowing that my anxiety will probably probably be pretty high. And this was how I started it. And the remarkable part was it was the lowest my anxiety was for months before that on that day. What allowed you to do that? I think I just came to this place where... I realized that fighting my anxiety was mm-hmm. not actually benefiting me. Yeah. And I didn't actually know what was going to take place. But as soon as it happened, it clicked of like, oh, like I've been in this fight or flight response about the sensations of anxiety for so long. Yes. And that simple acceptance of I wasn't accepting that I was going to be anxious the rest of my life. No. I was just accepting that on this day, I'm probably going to have high anxiety. Yes. And as a result, the anxiety like faded out. I think like what you're talking about in terms of like, we're not kind of just lying down and accepting that this is forever. Sometimes I think people could be afraid to even dabble in acceptance. Yes. Because it means, it might mean it could be forever. Yeah. And that's, that's a hard hurdle to get over. Yeah. 
But I think it's worth people kind of exploring. Yes. The yeah. element of acceptance. And maybe if the pain or symptom it's too hard for you to play around with, start with something that feels a little smaller in your life. Mm, that's really good. See what happens if you just have short-term acceptance about maybe a work situation yeah. that you can't change. Or, you know, a problem with your family or friends. Like something that feels a little bit more manageable. Maybe even back to like my situation of like the colds come so, on yes. and it's ruining your week. Yes. That's a perfect example of yeah. like you can start with these smaller things. Yes. But it's important that what acceptance can be done if it's done right is it can cultivate a feeling of safety. Right. And that's key here. You're yes. not accepting into hopelessness, helplessness. Yes. You're accepting and you're taking a posture towards a sense of safety that you're not going to fight against this or be fearful of it. Yes. And you're going to allow it to happen in the short run. And so it's understanding that this like acceptance for now or this radical acceptance of my situation right now, th like again, it connects to my long-term goal. So you're not abandoning that. No. It's just shifting for now or in that moment. Exactly. Yeah. And I think this is such an important topic yes. that people get shut down to so quickly. Yeah. And to be honest, when I was healing chronic pain in my chronic pain and symptoms, I wish I had come to that sooner. And in fact, on the moments that I've had pain relapses, yes, and they don't happen often, but I remember when I had my first, you know, pain flare after I was basically out of chronic pain. Yes. And it was my back. My back went out and it was scary because it was like the totally. first time my symptoms had spiked in months. Yeah. And there was an acceptance to the back pain. There yes. was an acceptance that, you know what, this is here right now. I'm not going to force this to go away. And I'm just going to cultivate feelings of safety, even while the sensations are here. Yeah. And that's what we want people to utilize this as. So this is our really short yeah. episode. <laughs> we almost didn't do this episode because uh, Anne was sick. Yeah. But she... She said she wanted to do it, so here we well, are. And I think, like, even though this was short, um, I think this is really valuable. And I think you're right, Tanner. I agree. Like, this is something to be utilized and, and to really think about. I like your idea of starting small, of, like, where can I practice, it, practice this where it's maybe a challenge or exploring it, but still maybe somewhat safe. Mm -hmm. um, and then just notice what that's like for you and what that experience is. And then start practicing it around the symptoms. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you everyone for listening. Thanks for listening. And we'll talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. If you want to book in a session with one of our therapists, you can go to our website at painpsychotherapy.ca. You can also follow us on Instagram at Pain Psychotherapy, where me and Anne are posting content daily and are there to respond to your comments. Also, check out our YouTube channel, which is named Tanner Murtong MSW RSW.